Hola, soy Merv Lukiba y estos son mis 5 mejores momentos de skins. Um, moment number one. Not number one, I'm gonna go backwards if that makes sense. So, f number five. I'm gonna go with the, um, I, I had a naked scene in, <laughs> on my first ever day. First ever day on skins. I remember it vividly. Um, before lunch, we had a lot of the sort of outdoor stuff like phone box scene where he's ringing back home and some news agent scenes and stuff and then after lunch it was all like interior in the house where he's like um, sort of putting up pictures on walls and skanking to some random South African tunes. Big up Alex Hancock by the way. And, um, and I, had a, I had a naked scene, a shower scene and I remember sitting with Ed Gibbons, the costume designer, <laughs> during lunch and telling him basically, well Ed I've got a, a naked scene after lunch. But obviously I'm not naked naked. He sort of looked at me like deadpan. I was like, yeah, you're naked. I went, I know, but like obviously not, you know, naked. He said, no, you're naked. I suppose he was trying to mentally prepare me for the fact that I'd be sort of stark on a set in front of like 50 strangers. To be fair, they did give me this, um, this little pouch, huge, huge pouch thing. <laughs> they sort of had to sort of maneuver yourself. <laughs> Yeah, they gave me this pouch thing. You sort of stick to the, to the side of your to your thigh, but for obvious reasons, when you're when you're in the shower, it doesn't remain stuck for very long. So before long, I just sort of you know ripped it off and just threw it. So you know, sod it. I'm uh, we've all seen one. Moving on. Um, uh, I'm not gonna go for. Right, we had. Um, I've I've always really liked the scene when when he's when he's first introduced to a few of the other principal characters. The um, bus stop scene. It's just just strange and odd. He's just this random African kid is just sat on a, a bus stop eating donuts. And I remember that scene. Simon Massey, bless him. He was. Um, almost unforgiven. Basically he told me to pick these donuts and he thought it'd be cool if I, I ate them all in one shot. So if you watch that that scene, there's a good, I don't know, 15 seconds where you know the, the, the camera's moving towards Thomas and I'm just scuffing donuts like for real. No cuts, watch it. I'm just downing these donuts and um, <laughs> once they called cut, I think it was Russ ran on with like a bucket and yeah, me regurgitating donuts into a bucket. Nice. So that was fun. Yes, of course, I have too many. Crazy, huh? No, thanks. I see there's a bit of I see. So what does she do? Drugs. We've just been to buy some skunky, haven't we? After the sits of these, no problem. Except mum used to hide them behind the fridge for the user. Mm. Wow, this has been amazing. But I need juicing. You need juicing? Yeah. That was the other thing that you asked. Barry! What are you talking about? My uncle Jock always says Barry when he drinks some brew. I don't know why. Mum says it because he's Scottish and mad. Hello. My name is Thomas. I'm so glad to meet you. Effie, so glad to meet you. I came yesterday from Africa. 
This place is exceedingly cold. Baba. No. How? No. No. Three. Um. Right, there's. I'm, I'm gonna go for for the French rap. That was that was so sick, man. Um, there's a, there's a funny story about the French rap because when 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 I initially read the the script, I think it's Thomas's episode in series three. When I first read the script, there were no lyrics for the rap. It was just Thomas raps in French on stage and this that and the third. Everyone goes crazy, and um, so I sort of went away and thought to myself like, "Fuck, am I allowed to swear?" Mm -hmm. I am, right? It's just skins. Yeah, I said, fuck, like, I've got to learn a, a French rap. And, um, yeah, so picture me, I sort of went home and started, like, looking up French rappers. And obviously, like, MC Solar, legendary French rapper, sort of pictured me on a, on a train to Bristol with my headphones in and my notepad, trying desperately hard to, like, dissect MC Solar lyrics, because I thought, fuck it, I'm just going to use these, sort of listening out and sort of writing them down. And um, it turns out that's a minefield in terms of copyright and whatnot. So all that effort was wasted. I think in the end they contacted some some random some random French rapper off MySpace, something like that, and just told him, yeah, this is it. There's this dude just come from Africa. This uh, and the third, bright 16 bars, and he just wrote it, sent it to me, and I'd like two days to learn it. And yeah, just boom, and that was it. Just banged it out. C'est la famille, la deux j'ai bien fait la famine J'extermine la vermine, shoot en temps, je termine Jure sur ma cora, dans sur ma cora Ici c'est la rue, je fais pas, c'est pas à la chorale C'est le son du bongo, en direct de Bristol Danse pas les bogos, c'est des sexes pistoles Dans ma domaine, mon rap, c'est pas pas la domaine Ouais, ouais, je domine, pas ça, tu poses une problème C'est du diable que je vais faire des bugs chez les boss bugs Je vais traiter les maîtres, les postes, les pistes J'ai traumatisé l'audience, c'est le public en France Dans ta bouche, tu vois pas, tu casses l'ambiance This could go either way, right? So I ain't done this in a long time. I'm trying hard to remember it. I guess. Si c'est la famille là j'ai bien vu la famine. J'extermine la vermine. Shoot à temps, je termine. Jure sur ma cora, danse sur ma cora. Ici c'est la rue qui te passe pas à la chorale. C'est le son du Congo en direct de Bristol. Danse pas les pogos, c'est pas les sex pistoles. Thomas Tomen me rappe, te frappe à l'abdomen. Oui, je domine. Quoi ça te passe? Another one I really like is, it's, it's not a Thomas scene, it's, I'm not sure what episode it is, but it's, um, it's a scene between Ollie and Kat, and um, I think they've just come from some clinical psychiatrist-y sort of place, and they're sort of um, discussing to one another how they're, they're trying to be more honest and upfront about stuff, and um, yeah, Kat starts to... <laughs> Starts to confess how she's into into girls, and the way she does it, like she just starts um, I love Fanny and this, that, and the third, and it's just an awesome scene, man. And you look at Ollie, <laughs> sort of hyperventilating, and he's sort of doing this and licking his lips, and um, you can sort of see that he's looking at her, but his mind is completely somewhere else. He's sort of picturing all these all these perverted things that she's coming out with, and you can just see his brain just go. <laughs> and explode at which point he passes out. Brilliant. Snap. Must be good if it can help you calm down and be more honest. Yeah, wasn't really what I was hoping for. Do you need calming down? <laughs> Believe me, I totally do. I'm getting overstimulated just talking to you now. I mean, you're exciting me. I Wait, that's not... Uh, bugger! Shitification! JJ, it's hard telling people things about yourself, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm gonna try. It's no big deal. Probably couldn't care less. About what? I want to have sex with girls. Right. Yeah. I like girls. I like sex with girls. I like their rosy lips, their hard nipples, bums, soft thighs. I like tits and fanny, you know? There. I said it. And now... 
final moment. Um, this is this is definitely my favourite, personally, my favourite ever scene on Skins. And it's one of those scenes where, when we were filming it, we didn't really, you know, we didn't really know how, we didn't grasp how touching it was going to be. How artistic does that sound? Grasp how touching. Um, we didn't really know how awesome it was going to be, man, because obviously we don't film them in chronological order, you can be filming this one day, well, on the same day and then doing this next episode. And credit to, to Charles Martin, the director of the EP, he sort of, he knew how big the scene was, so he sort of had us on the ball. And it was freezing cold, I think it was like a November, it's the scene between, all, well, between Thomas and, and Emily, it's, a, it's the bus stop scene. In episode nine, I think it is, episode nine. And it's just the way, like, both the characters where they are both in their relationship they're at a crossroads and they just sort of nicely nestle in the middle I mean obviously she's just had a row with with Naomi prior to that scene and it's the first time we've seen Thomas since the craziness of the woods where everything sort of comes to the fore and um, they sort of both just just help each other it's a really beautiful scene and um, yeah and once, once, you, once you watch it you see just how big it is, and then Alex does his, his magic in post with Small Town Boy. And um, Dan Gethick is the one who actually actually pointed out the scene to me prior to it even being shown. He said, you, you said the scene in, in, episode, in episode 9 is awesome. And then when I watched it, yeah man, dope scene. And plus I would, I'd be unforgiven if I didn't say this was my, my number one because everyone's sort of been spamming me on Twitter when I asked, saying, the bus stop scene. So definitely the the Thomas Emily moment. Hi Emily. Emily, where are your shoes? Hi. Um, hello. I can't find them. Well, you can wear mine. No, you don't need to. It's okay. I don't mind their feet. It's easier to run. Here, let me give you a jacket. No, really, Tom. It's fine. I have free coats. See? Fixed up, yes. What do you do if someone you love lets you down? Really fucks you over. You must try to stop loving them. When? Is that possible? No. I don't think so. I'm gay, Thomas. It's fine. Shall we call a taxi? I don't think this bus is going to come soon. And besides, my feet are extremely cold. <laughs> Thanks for watching my top five skins moments. I would say the outro in Spanish, but my Spanish isn't isn't that good. So um, cheers.